and gentlemen, boys and girls, your Manchester High School West engage in pre-game handshakes and the pre-game coin toss. And running the coin toss will be your referee, the man in the white hat, Mr. John Jaskoka. Merrimack Valley, the visitors will call the flip. Knights have won the coin toss, but have elected to defer to the second half. Merrimack Valley has elected to receive. Your Knights will be defending the north end here at Meisel Veterans Memorial Field. It's week six of the football season here, and we are back and better than ever here on Manchester Public Television. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to William Meisel Memorial Field here on the campus of Manchester West High School for tonight's matchup between the West Blue Knights and the Merrimack Valley Pride. My name is Kyle Heavey. Along with me is Michael Gonzalez. Michael, it's been a tough, tough year for both teams, but we are ready to see a good matchup between these two teams. Yes, absolutely. It's going to be a good game here. Um, doesn't have to be top of the standings to get a good game. Sometimes it's the bottom of the standings to get a good game, but we are guaranteed a good game. Thing is, Merrimack is coming in with Merrimack Valley coming in with only 22 on the roster, Kyle, versus 58 on West. Certainly a big number. I think is the largest West team in a decade. But they're coming into this this game 0-4 in Division Two West, but 0-5 overall. They definitely have the tougher division, but Merrimack Valley coming in, getting their first win last week, a 7-6 win. They have had a decent season overall, and right now to have East versus West is kind of fun. Yeah, absolutely. To get that win under their belt gives them the slight edge, but I still think West is going to carry their first win today. Braden Hussey with a long throw deep downfield. He connects, and he goes, he's going to walk in for the touchdown. And look at that. The Pride are alive right now. A big throw right there. Big catch. And look at that. We got a 66-yard touchdown on the very first play of the game. 11 seconds in, Michael. Yeah, uh, that was a scripted play. And, you know, they come out with their scripted play. That was a play action. They sent them on a seam, and, you know, it worked out just like they drew it up. Can't go wrong with that. Okay, big, big play, and now they take an early lead. West had decided to defer to the second half when receiving the ball, and it's going to backfire for now as Merrimack Valley will try to get the extra point here. What a beautiful throw by Hussey right there. That was a really, you know, you can't say much more about you got to respect the game. Yeah, the booming kick, too. Uh, they, I was watching them practice it. Now, look at this. The wow. Pride are very yeah. excited about this. Uh, you Not don't, ideal. just don't expect to have a 66-yard uh, <laughs> bomb to start the game. But here we are, and West will receive the ball. West will be going north to south. That's right to left across your screen while they will be in their blue jerseys and white pants and blue helmets while Merrimack Valley is going south to north. That's left to right. And obviously we saw them score quickly, so we'll see what they can do here as uh, big number 64 will be doing the kicking off, and that's Travis Garcia. You said it perfectly. That was a great throw by senior quarterback and captain Braden Hussey right there. It's like they practice that play. Hopefully West, you know, is on that now. <laughs> you know, they, they get to shake it off, and they need quarterback Gio Doria to have a big drive right here. 
certainly is a, you know, a factor here. You're already down early in this game, and this isn't just a, you know, you, you've gotten the big losses out of the way. Now it's time to uh, to know what you're going to do in the week six. And Garcia with a big kick yeah. here that's going to be caught, fumbled. Oh, Bob, oh it goes into the end zone, <laughs> and the referee is is thankfully saying, yeah, no, he's, you know, fair catch, I guess. And yeah. West will get the ball, luckily, there at yeah. the – 20-yard uh, line. Hayden Marshall's thinking... 25-yard. Uh, yeah, 20-yard line. Excuse thinking me. the ref for that one as he did... He did call... I don't know what happened, but they called it dead, and West is in business here, so we're going to go with that. <laughs> <laughs> Rightfully so. This is the this is the game West should be up for. If you see the crowd, they're up. The band's here. The cheerleaders are here. This is the one that they have to really circle on their calendar. So this is a winnable game, Kyle. I mean, last week uh, they've had some tough games with Milford, Sauhegan, Pelham, and even John Stark put up a, a 50 burger on them. <laughs> and uh, well, they were able to score two touchdowns in that game. We'll like to see them score two or more today. Man in motion, high snap, Doria able to catch it, and he's going to take it himself, but he's going to be wrapped up and brought down. And Merrimack Valley is appreciating a, t a bad snap to start things off. They have to come at so. I like that play. I, I wouldn't get too tricky. I think that the the numbers are going to come into play. I really do. I, I think having 22 players on your team is going to bite them in the fourth quarter. But for now, we'll see. They they obviously, if you get get a league big, you know, you just got to do the right. little things to keep things going. But a um, um, yard loss on that, so it'll be second and eleven. I like. I I mean, I wonder. You know. Merrimack Valley just came out flying on a pass. I wonder if Geo's going to throw here. A nice little fake right there, but it's not going to work for much more than a few yards. I, uh, I'm impressed with that little play here to get things going here for the. But now it's going to be third and long after just a two yard gain. Right. I mean, they they kind of they're getting cute with it, but I got to I got to give credit to Merrimack Valley's. D line right there. They just converged and they two plays in a row. They've not given up anything. They're, I was kind of stubborn. I was here early looking at some of these these guys and Travis Garcia is going to be all over the place. But I also was very impressed with Jed Duquette, the uh, tackle defensive end, just a junior, and he's got some size for the. I was, was going to say seventy five was all over that play. That's yeah, Jed, exactly. Right? Yeah, Jed is. You'll we'll be saying his name a few times in this contest for sure. And a little handoff, and look at Jed is going to affect wow. that play. He really is. And wow, look at that. He maybe not go <laughs> right after that guy because he is pumped up, and now it will be a three and out just he's two a, minutes into this game for West. He's a force out there. And, and after the play, giving that little flex, that's that's to the sideline saying, let's go, guys. Now, I wonder if West is going to, if they fix their punting ailments. Or are they going to go for it, you think? We haven't seen them in a few weeks since we uh, had to witness that uh, that last. Looks uh, like they're going for it, Kyle. I was wrong. There's, maybe they didn't have fixed that. It's going to be a they, fourth and ten here. They're going to go for it, yep. See if they can get them with a. Uh, or they're going to punt with Geo. A flag is thrown here. We haven't even mentioned the referees in tonight's contest. But we got a chance to uh, to meet them here. As uh, they'll be saying what the looks penalty like, is. Looks like the linesman judge on that one. It's going to back them up five on looks that. Looks like it's uh, offsides. Yeah, illegal procedure. Illegal, yeah. John Jas Jasakala is the head referee. Umpire Robert Mahan. Head linesman Coret Coretta Lee. Line judge Jeff Kusher And back judge Tim Leaf. And now so looks like quick Gio's kick. Getting, yeah, Gio's the punter now. So. See if it can good take bounce. a good bounce. It yep. does, but Merrimack Valley will appreciate that, getting the ball at the 45-yard line. I think he mentioned it last time we did a game. Why don't they have the quarterback, Geo, kind of have the option to punt or go for it, depending on the lineup. And it looks like they took your advice, and that time Geo was the punter slash quarterback, and that time he punted, as you saw him step back a couple yards to do that. Well, let's see what uh, Merrimack Valley comes out with on yeah. their second drive. Obviously, we know that they have uh, some ability to to throw the long ball. Let's we'll see if they uh, go for it for a second time. West obviously is seeing that they have four wide receivers out deep, and it's going to be a little pitch out and going to gain some yards here. 
and finally be wrapped up. And that's number one, Colby Schaefer. Yeah, this seems a little too easy on that. Um, keep an eye on sophomore safety, Rayvon Nelson for West. He's the one that they kind of, I wouldn't say picked on, but play actioned, you know, got him the bite on the run and then threw over his head. So um, you got to assume that he's learned from that. Him in number four, um, Keyshawn Foster are going to be the two deep back men for West. So keep an eye on them. Well, that was enough for a first down. Now it's another first and 10 from the 30-yard line. Merrimack Valley in the shotgun. Man in motion. Oh, he's going to get the oh. hold off. Trying to go to the outside. Is able to get yeah. past. Is it first down automatically. Now we'll see if, uh, where he ends up. And it will be first and goal for the Pride. I could tell you right where that play went wrong. And it's our boy, number 75, again, who made the block. But also... The defensive end wasn't sealing. He wasn't containing there, and they got right around the edge. He had a jump on him, and again, you got to learn from that moment right there going forward. Well, they've sliced through pretty good. It was a, uh, you know, at, from the 45 yard line. Now, two plays later, we're down at the seven. Jed Duquette is a force on both sides. 38 yards gain in two plays, and we'll see what they can do here on first and goal. Shotgun snap. Cuba gonna keeper. take it himself, yeah. trying to get to the outside. He's gonna be wrapped up and brought down. And number 56 right there, able to stop things, Divine McCall. Yeah, you see his name a lot. Keyshawn Foster came up from safety there, really kind of committed and guessed right on that one. Luckily, he uh, he was able to get them for only five this time, so. Yeah, the two yards was gained on the play, but here we are, a second and goal from the five yard line. It's cliche to say that this is a play, the drive of the game, but really important for West to try to stop him here, obviously. <laughs> oh, a little pitch out, trying to get around the corner. Atta He's going to be wrapped up and brought down. And West starting to feel things out for sure. Keyshawn Foster, like you said, is going to have a big game, and he was able to, he was up for the test to stop him in his tracks right there. Right, coming from the safety, you know. In, you know, Mer Merrimack Valley did a good job play uh, play actioning that play for the big home run ball. But, yeah, you can't abandon that if you're Keyshawn. And he did. It's two tackles in a row now. And they got a third and four here. Now into the I formation here for Merrimack Valley. Oh, quick hand up in the middle. Ooh. And will he get past? I'm not sure if he was. No signal from either uh, side. And it's going to be a fourth and goal here. Yeah, you can see that the Lions judge with holding it up. Fourth down here. And uh, they got that booming kicker. So I'm wondering if they'll go for it or are they going to go for the uh, touchdown here. Fourth and goal from the one-yard line. See if they pull out a uh, Philadelphia the Eagles. Get a come up flying west. Butt push right get here. Yeah, that's exactly what we I see. Think they got and they are able to get in. No. No, they're, they're not they listing it. What, all the coaches here for Merrimack Valley are saying yes. Are. <laughs> but. No, they got they, it. They got the stop, Kyle. That is a exactly huge what they needed. moment in this get contest right there. Yes, I, it is. We obviously are really far away from the action. And we're, we're looking at 64 yards away from being able to see down if that was in or not. Referees were there, and they say no. Yeah. So Obviously, the coaches are going to put their arms up, but. Yeah, <laughs> good job by Wesso. I told you that was a huge stop for them. Now it is is backed up as they are right now at the one yard line. You'll take that any day of the week. Yeah, they uh, they obviously went uh, and punted after being from the 15 yard line. Now I mean they have just inches to go, and this could be a yeah. very tight window here. You got to make sure you get across the uh, the end zone line so you don't get the two points safety. They gotta yeah, they gotta get two or three here. Are they going to go shotgun? we got to give him some room. He's going to run yeah. it out, and he stopped, and it you will be a safety. safety. You can dance if you want to, Kyle. Put those arms <laughs> up in the air, and that will <laughs> be an extra two points for Merrimack Valley, and the, now the score is 9-0. to zero. Interesting play call going, you know, five yards deep into the shotgun because any ground, he like he got four, but he didn't get five, and unfortunately that results in the safety dance. Yeah, you always appreciate the safety dance because that's a tough play and not very common that you uh, mm -hmm. you see that in every game, but you were able to see it here early in this contest. We're only six minutes and three seconds in, 6.03 for those in catching up, and uh, 
Merrimack Valley will get the ball now. Yeah, that's the other side of the coin. And this will, it's not like the professionals where they have to just kick it from their hand. They're, at least they're able to put it up on a tee. And we'll see if this will help the cause with uh, kicking off. Yeah, great job by number 74 again. Once again, getting in there and making that big play. Well, ready to left, ready to right, and ready for more action. It's going to be a little pooch kick. Yep. It's got a, some Good nice play. spin on it, but uh, smartly, Colby Schaefer is saying, nope, let's get the ball right here, and they will get the ball for the second time in West Territory. One of the things about having 22 on your roster is you're going to have your better players playing special teams, and Kobe is a running back and used to situations where he would jump on the ball. It's a good play, good heads up play by number one, Kobe Sheffer, retaining the ball for Merrimack Valley. And again, if you're West, you'll take the two versus seven, but, you know, here we go again. Well, here we go. First and Short 10 here from the 46-yard line. A little run up here. Schaefer is going to take it, and oh he's going to make some moves. Now being pushed away, and it will be finally dropped down. It's going to be very close to a first down. But Yeah, Keyshawn Foster with his fourth tackle already for West. Someone else is going to have to help Mug. He's He came from the other side of the field. He's, he's playing near side us at safety, and he made a sweep left tackle. So, you know, he's going to need some help if they're going to have success. Oh, it was not enough for a first down. It's second and one from the 37-yard line going left to right across your screen here. Five minutes and 10 seconds to go in this opening quarter here. It's a beautiful night for football here in late or mid-October. little shimmy, and Shaver is going to get oh the boy. first down and more so on his feet there and is finally is brought down. Four again, yeah. That's, I mean... I'll tell you what, they have problems if uh, Shepard is going to have that much space. But once again, Keyshawn Foster makes the tackle again, Kyle. Well, Keyshawn was also helped there by uh, number 36. Uh, he was part of the tackle, Rayvon Nelson. But they're both safeties, and that's not ideal for the... That means they've gone through yes, two lines of defense exactly. to get there. Exactamundo. But yeah, he's impressive. Kobe Shepard after getting that re uh, kickoff play two consecutive big gains on running back. Hussey back in the shotgun, got a, does have a man behind him, and we'll see what they can do. First and 10 from the 20 yard line. Gonna Interesting. Be a quick little pitch, wow. cut, and it's gonna be run, and this will get into the end zone. Ooh, a 20 yard touchdown pass, and I believe that was Michael Heine that got in there, the tight end. What an interesting play. It looked like Josh McDaniels drew that up. It certainly has become a very popular play over the past few years. And it's a, a pass, too, for the QB stats. <laughs> you can't go wrong with that. So that's two touchdowns there for Mr. Hussey there, who was able to add to his highlight reel for the shore. Braden Hussey, watch out now. Yeah, Braden Hussey is... Kick is up, wow. and it... Looks good from our angle. It is good from the rough's angle as well. I mean, and that quickly we are <laughs> have a sixteen to nothing lead for the Merrimack Valley Pride here. That kick could have hit right aid. I I think it hit CMC <laughs> if I remember correctly. Yeah, I, I climbed the hill and went uh, went down uh, Main Street here. That's a nice weapon to have when you have a kicker like that. Gee Louise. Well, West. Uh, hopefully has gotten a taste that, uh, okay, Merrimack Valley is here to go. I guess so. I mean, you know, they did just get their first win. They haven't been putting up huge numbers, but right now, you know, based on West score differential, it's not um, trending to go that well right now. But they could thwart that with one quick drive here by Gio and the ball back. So, Junior Travis Garcia will kick us off again. And we'll see how far this ball lands. Oh, wow. it's a good one. To the moon. Caught. It had trouble again yeah, at about the four-yard line. Now just going to try to get some yards and is brought down. And this is a tough spot again, Michael. They're within the, I believe, right around the 10 to 15-yard line. Good tackle. I got to give him credit. Yeah, there is no number 10 on the roster, but I do want to give him props as I did see him get way down the field. Good tackle, buddy. Tough when uh, you know. there's always a game where you don't 
There's always one on each roster, you know. Absolutely. I'm sure that we will figure something out here for uh, finding out who number 10 is because that was a pretty good play. But, yeah, first and 10 from the 15-yard line. And let's see, West obviously has had a tough go of things. Uh, safety on their second drive, their last time with the ball, and I'll see what they can do with the ball for the third time. All right, going to go to Chavez right here. Yeah. Hot. Good Staying job. in bounds, ring around the rosy, and so out of bounds. He doesn't normally line up at at, uh, see, at uh, split end like that. Once I saw 87 out there, I, I had a feeling that it was a drawn up play to um, 87 Chavez. Obviously, he's a big player here for sure. Good love to get him. Yeah, senior, big guy. And uh, look out for a couple players. I'd like to see them get the ball to six. Obviously, Carl Taylor Jr. is their guy, their playmaker in the slot near side here, Kyle. Yeah, I'm focusing on him right now in the camera, and it's uh, we'll see. We'd like to see him, sure. I know we got injured in the first game of yeah, the year. Yeah, oh, Quick little handoff. It's going to be. To he faked me up. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we were able to be stopped, but that stop was good enough for a first down. So the first first down of the game for Manchester West, and here we go. Trying to get something going here. Hey, it is something, though. They did get something going, and it is momentum. We do have a player unfortunately, down, unfortunately. Yeah, that's not a good sign right there, as that looks like a, uh offensive lineman. Uh, not really sure who exactly that is from our angle. The team's Manchester West will go to their sidelines here and try and do a hope for the best with 404 remaining in this first quarter. It's been all pride so far in this contest able to get up and we can see that it is yeah number 55 damon butts yeah and uh i thought for a second it might be aiden paradise aiden paradise is the core of their alignment but you've seen uh butts come in and do some good work this year too so hopefully he can get back in action a little limp there. I hope it I mean, man up might time. be just an ankle or something like that. But yeah, yeah, it doesn't look that that um, serious. So that's good. He's off on his own, and that's all you can ask for. Football is a a violent sport, Kyle. So anytime you can get off with just a quick limp, you're good to go. But back in action, here we go. And you know, you look at the sideline of Merrimack Valley. It is only 11 players on the bench versus West. It has a ton. Well, first and 10 from the 23-yard line now. Actually, that looks 25-yard line, excuse me. Quick little swing pass. Out and about in the flats. He go, tries to make some move, gets another first down. He's going to be brought down at the 40-yard line yeah. and able to guide and get something going. Keyshawn Foster able to catch that and had some room, made it happen, and another first down. Yeah, Jacob LeClaire got a hold of his shirt and did not let go. He was riding the pony the whole way home. He's doing all that he could. <laughs> Good he knew job, that though. Had to get done. It's allowed. You know that's why a lot of players um, will tuck their shirt in as tight as possible with the tight shirts. Uh, but good job, good job by Geo getting him in stride. That play is dependent on that quarterback getting him the ball in stride so he can keep running with his momentum. And watch for 87 here near side again. He's right there on the 40 and. Instead, it's going to be a handoff here to the outside. Paradise. And he's going to, ooh, that was close. It I was didn't know close. if it was going to be a uh, little, a little 15-yard penalty. A little but extra action there. But, um, you, know, you know, referee said, that, yeah, Jake, yeah, he was Jacob high, Leclerc. high and late. But, hey, playing to the whistle, I, I would not call that at all. I, I'd say, hey, keep, you know, keep an eye on it. But that's a clean play. Yeah, second and six now, a four-yard gain on that play. And West is finally looking like they're driving pretty well here. Yeah, they have a nice little drive, a couple first downs, not much yardage. They need a chunk play right here. A chunk play would be great. I mean, we wish the same thing for the Patriots every Sunday, and yet here <laughs> we are hoping for the same thing from West here. Yeah, that's not good. Another handoff Get right up the middle, ran right into the lineman of Merrimack Valley, and they were able to stop him, but it should be a third and short here. It's Paradise. Two two plays in a row. They went to their big guy, Paradise Jr., running back, one of their leaders, led by brother uh, lineman Eden Paradise. So, you know, West is riding their hot hands. They've done that. They've made a habit of it. 
you see a couple plays in a row, they go to their guy. Same with uh, Merrimack Valley. They went to uh, Kobe Sheffer a couple times. Once he was hot, they kept handing him the ball. So a lot of streakiness in football. Big third down right here. Minute 20 remaining in the quarter. Ooh. And we have a f whistle flag. I am going to assume the offense. it's a false start. That's a total bummer for Wes because they had a one yard to go. And if that backs them up, they're going to have... Yeah, that's going to back them yeah, up. Yeah, that will back them up. So now it went from third and one to third and six. And that's, and that's huge. A, that's a huge five yards. Pride fans below us all on the fence celebrating that penalty. And now we will see if it will go to maybe Carl Taylor. Maybe it will go to uh, you know Elio Chavez. We'll see what happens on this play. Shout out Mike Cotter on the car. I saw that. <laughs> now it looks I'm it's, I'm assuming it's gonna be a run play. They've stacked the line pretty well. Oh, Keyshawn sweet, in deep sweep though. Keyshawn too, too trying far. to get around. Oh, he's still on his feet and he's gonna be brought uh, down. I hate that, Kyle. Only because you got twelve yards to make up when you sweep it so far back. Great momentum, good good blocking actually, but I mean, what can you do, you know? He was lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage on that play. And this it will gonna, be fourth down. They got to go for it. If they went for it at their 15, they're going to go for it now, right? Well, coming out and trying to figure things out. We'll see another big fourth down, Gio Daria. But I'm thinking the play clock, the... Yeah, this will be a wrap-up of the quarter. I'm not sure how much time they have, but... Nah. That'll it be could it. be a five-yard penalty if they don't make it in time. And the whistles blow, and that will do it for the third, or excuse me, the first quarter here. Well, it looks like West has kind of gotten their feet under them now, and despite the big lead by Merrimack Value, Valley, it, it does seem like they are kind of, you know, shaking off the webs and ready to roll. So we'll see what happens going forward. You know, I, I know that Andrew Proventure is doing everything in his power and to try to get his team ready every single week. And the, obviously their their schedule has been one of brutalness to start the season with Pelham, oh. Sauhegan, Milford, Disgusting. Yeah. John Stark. Oh my God. It's, uh, it's not been easy, but these kids are still showing up and don't expect them to just lay over and, uh, and you know, be done with things. A testament to the coaches is still 58 players on the team. A lot of times if it wasn't going well, they would – drop off but no they're sticking with their coach it can't be that bad if they're staying around you know as a uh, player for a very small school it's always very tough you don't want to you know give up and uh, Ma Manchester West 0-4 in Division 2 West with Hollis Brookline sitting in the basement for now but they have some winnable games throughout the rest of the season here and we look forward to following them to see what they can do here because uh, I think they got they got some uh, some fight in them for sure against uh, teams like Hollis Brookline and Hillsborough during Hoppington. I like tonight, Kyle. I got to come back and call on it. It's been a uh, good couple days here. The Central West soccer team girls won last night by a score of one nothing. You were there filming that game. Yes. And before this, the boys soccer team won six nothing. So. That's a touchdown right there, and we love. Oh my oh, God! My a block! Goodness. Oh, trying to get past. So He's got to be run into the middle, and that will not be enough for a first down, and it'll be a turnover. Five is a beast. Jed Duquette. Did you see his jump? I, I could not believe how. He, I'm, I'm curious a, if he can dunk. I bet he can in pads. That was incredible <laughs> to see how high that he was able to go on that play. And then make the play, too. Like, come back. Like, great job by uh, Merrimack Valley. They got some beasts out there. We do have a serious-looking injury here for the Knights as uh, sitting right there at the 45-yard line. And uh, all, all the teams will go to their sidelines to try to figure things out and, you know, I'm not sure if he was the one that uh, got jumped on there by Jed Duquette or not, but it looks like the quarterback. To be honest, I can't. I yeah, it's tough to see. I I know that uh, it's gonna definitely change things up if that's the case for West, as he's just a sophomore playing. 
<clears throat> doing his best out there in a struggling team, but yeah. First play of the second quarter and not, that's gotten very silent here in the stadium trying to see what's, uh, what do we do? You know, what, what's, how, can, uh, we need this player. Oh, if, yeah, if it's Geo, then they're um, just going to have to figure it out. I mean, probably putting Carl Taylor Jr. would be my guess, as he has been a quarterback in the past. That's certainly a, an option. You, you lose your, your speed for some ways with, uh, with playing something like that. Camden Wing is listed as a sophomore quarterback as well, so that is the other option that I'm seeing on the roster here. I mean, it looked like he kind of was going, you know, he, the, first of all, the jump was ridiculous, but he, he kind of ducked down to it, got his bearings, and then run, ran for the first down, but didn't let up, just kind of, you know, gave his best effort, and that in turn got crunched by a few players, and I'm guessing uh, he got rattled is my guess. Able to now sit up into a... Might have lost his wind, too. That's always a possibility. From the way that his uh, his hands were punching the ground, it seems like it's a little bit more serious than... Uh, uh, yeah, he's holding his right knee. The uh, coaches for West, Andrew Proventure, uh, offensive coordinator Josh Radisic, defensive coordinator Scott Dolan, and able to get up, and you see it right there on your screen, ladies and gentlemen. They only have one other listed quarterback on their team, and that is a freshman. Uh, they look at, at the very bottom, Camden Wing. Okay, Camden Wing. Let's see if Camden Wing comes in. But regardless, they're on defense right now anyway, so. Gio is able to walk off on his own power. We'll try to get an idea at halftime here to see what this might be. Terrence Beauville near side, a corner right here, Kyle. Made some amazing plays on offense. Last game we did had like four or five catches uh they're yet to go him go to him he's playing uh solid defense but he's someone i'd like to see get involved too well here we go with a f another first and ten here they're not even really covering the receiver our way and a run here we go look at some speed with some blockers making some moves so on his feet we'll almost fumbled ball. but he was able to hold on to it and a big play right there down to the 30-yard line. I mean, they have... Oh, excuse me, the 20-yard line. They have some big boys out there. Um, I'm looking at 72. Ryan Mon uh, Monahan Jr., he's far and above the rest, like, size-wise. And he just absolutely... He looked like Orlando Pace out there. <laughs> Trent Brown, obviously, and... For those uh, younger audience members, someone that's a uh, big size and able to still move, yeah. Even though he's on the uh, injured list for this coming up Sunday, yeah. But Le left tackle, that's your spot. That's the guy you want. First so. and ten from the twenty. He's gonna go. Hussey back. gonna run. He's gonna throw it up in the air to the far end zone Ooh. and not able to hold on to it. And he thinks that he should have had that pass. I thought he was gonna go to the near the near side or his near um, receiver option. Number one out of the backfield, Kobe Sheffield was wide open. But he did elect to go for the big ball to 88, Michael uh, Heine, for another touchdown for Heine, going for his second. They, they'll come back to that play. That obviously worked pretty well. It yeah. just, uh, just a quick waggle, waggle right, uh, good blocking, and many options. He just he, he went for the TD on that one. Well, Braden in the shotgun again, gets the ball. Option. And he's got to go up the middle, able to get some yards there, will be dropped at about the 13-yard line. Good for a seven-yard gain, and it will be a third and three here. Divine McCall, good job getting to that ball. Middle linebacker, you know, you get that perfect number, 56, but it's uh, it seems to be like they're getting through that first line of attack for West. Almost every time. So big play here, obviously. 
Hussey reading the defense. He's going to just ch change the play. Quick to the fullback, able to get the first down and more. And he'll be down at about the four-yard line. Yeah, Kobe Sheffer once again getting that big carry. And it did... He did. I mean, he's a big looking kid for sure. Even it, from he, here, like it, I don't want to tackle him. It did appear he was running fullback for sure, um, but yeah, we've seen him split out. We've seen him go wide. We've seen him right there dive up the middle. So yeah, very versatile. We saw him almost get a. You know, he was open on that pass pattern. So yeah, big guy, but a lot of agility. Oh, well, here they we go. go. Four wide here. First and goal from the five yard line. Merrimack Valley Wide open. going up to number one. He's going to run it through, and it's touchdown. a touchdown for the Pride. Colby Schaefer able to get that ball a few times in the red zone and able to get another touchdown up on the board for the Pride. I think that's one of those where you, you want to give uh, the guy something he deserved that one. Now I wonder which Jeep he's going to hit with the ball on this kick. Ooh, that's a lot of <laughs> lots of lots of and will he clear the fence? Wrangler's down there. High snap, kick is up, and will it hit a Jeep? <laughs> it does not a little. We still have plenty of time to see what will happen in this contest, but that point by Garcia adds another, another point to the pride lead. It is now 23 to zero, and now is gonna be an interesting look for the Blue Knights with a new quarterback in play. And we can only hope that Gio will be all right yeah. after being taken out. We'll we assume, we assume. Um, but, yeah, one would think after the amount of time he was down that he would be out of commission. But never, never take away from the heart of this kid Gio Doria because he's a sophomore and he's been going. This, is only, this season is only going to make him better next year, you know. Uh, you go through your lumps. You, you, you got it sometimes. So important to catch the ball here. And you know, there's, there's been an issue so far in the three touchdowns. Two for two. <laughs> a big kick right here. Feeling it. Nope. Oh, not again. Issues with it. Able to get it up to the 20 yard oh. line. And he's got to be finally brought down. Shout out 10 again. Got to give him credit on that one. This guy's a kickoff beast. Tackle there by number 25 so, that I don't have on the roster so when for you, Merrimack Valley. When you muff the kick three times in a row, what it does is it allows your kick team to catch up, and you can't block for You can't find a seam. You can't go kick off left, right. You know what I mean? Like, So you got you to gotta, – another credit to the kicker. You know, Maybe he's putting so much masse on it that it's hard to handle. Carl Taylor Jr. was the last one out of the coach's call. So we'll see if – no. They're going to go with four. We, Keyshawn Foss is going to run QB here. Or is that pair? Uh, we're, we're waiting to see what's going to happen here. Yeah, they got this three quarterbacks. This is the Miami Dolphins right here. They got four quarterbacks. <laughs> he's going to hold on to it, try to get to the outside. And he's going to be brought down right at the line of scrimmage. They're going to go with Camden Wing. Sophomore quarterback um, must be, you know, their backup. And right there, they just kind of – now you kind of keep it conservative. If anything, you might get a spark, you know. Maybe can – maybe Wings like, hey, my time to shine, you know. We all saw what Tom Brady did when Bloodsoe came out, right? We've seen it before, but it's, it's still a, a, a wildcat formation, I guess you can call this, from West now. Pulling out the 2008 oh, right Miami the Dolphins, but a penalty is being thrown, and now that's what happens when you get, you know, Coretta you, Lee is saying it looks like it's going to be a false start. You get cute with it, and, you you know, you see a lot of teams like Sohegan, Pelham, they kind of run the same formations every time. Wes, when you get too much going on, this is already the second backup penalty now. And it's because of procedure issues. Tough look right there as that brings him back five yards. So it'll be a second and 15 here. It did look like he was going back to pass, though. Like the traditional passing play right there. 
Right? Am I wrong? Uh, yeah. You are absolutely right. He was ready to, to let one go. And now it'll be a timeout called by the Pride. And Manchester West will take this timeout for sure as they need to figure out what Camden Wing is able to pay attention to on the in the QB spot as uh, obviously this is now his team and it's it's you know they're trying to avoid going 0 and 5 in the division good good timeout right there by coach prevention because well, it was what? called by Merrimack Valley. Oh, why they? Okay. It was called by Merrimack Valley. So Matt Shaw saw something that he didn't like on his defense. But it does give, yeah, it does give West more time to kind of, because most of these players are playing defense as well. So that's the first time coach of West could actually gather all 11 offensive unit and talk to them at once with their new quarterback. So whether it was called by them or not, it was an opportunity to talk to their unit as a whole. Well, wing and the shotgun gets a low snap. He's running for it. He's trying to find a room. Oh and he goodness. is going to be dropped back at the 10-yard line. And that yeah. will be fresh off a touchdown. Kobe Shepard just comes in and makes a big play again. And he's getting <laughs> some love from his teammates for that for sure. As it was a team effort to bring him down. But he was able to, uh, to see something that was up. And along with... Nolan Beck, they're able to tackle them. So it'll be a third and 20 here, Michael. Yeah. And I don't know what what remedy there is for West right now with trying to get out of this <laughs> hole that go. they're in. You got to do it like a four go. I'll, I'll go and line holes and just throw it up. That's what they've yet to do. They've yet to have any kind of deep threat all year. Here we go. 7.50 to go in the Second quarter, they're, they're actually punting on third down. Not wow, I hate that. Didn't see that coming. It takes I mean, a good bounce, and it will go out of, ball, out of bounds at the 42-yard line. Here's the good side of it. You see it here and there, every blue moon. But here's the good side. They didn't see it coming either. So if they didn't get the first down, they have to punt anyway, and they have their punt people out there, and it gets worse and worse. That time you get like a freebie punt, you know. It certainly surprised us. I I just it it gives you the sign of almost concession in a little in a, in a sense. Well, the concession stands are open. Uh, two dollar hot, hot dogs. Do two dollar hot dogs are always a go to here. I brought cash tonight. We'll here we go. Hot dogs. <laughs> Hussey going to go for a little screen pass. Wide open. Gets the first down, still on his feet, and is finally brought down at about the 20-yard line. Perfect little screen that's good for about a 22-yard gain. But there is a flag on the ground. Boy, do and they that need will that. most likely come as a holding call, and probably, that will bring it back. Probably the game-saving flag right there, if there ever was one, because West looks – Really flat-footed right now, and this could back them up. This could lead to, you know, a turnover on downs perhaps. This is a huge penalty because right there, what, what's the gain on that? About 40-yard differential, I think. Uh, it was a, yeah, it was uh, absolutely because now they're going back to as a five-yard loss. So this is big. West has to capitalize. I'd like to see them kind of put a little more pressure. I know they had that. That play in the first, that first play of the game, that touchdown really kind of got in their heads a little bit because it kind of has a backing up. They haven't tried one yet, but still it's in their back of their mind. Well, now a first and 14. There was a spot penalty. Get that. And try to get out of this. Oof. They need to tackle him, and finally they get the tackle. Boy, he was able to make, make a lot of people miss right there, but finally being brought down. Good little run there by Reese Claremont. Yeah, Carl Taylor Jr. came in flying like Ronnie Lott and just missed him by about an inch. Did get a piece of him, which kind of slowed him down. But well, if now, he connected, that ball would probably popped out. It'll be about a second in 13 here. Yeah, this is all Merrimack Valley, Valley this game. I mean, this half for sure. West will receive the ball in the second half here. Good play right there. Get it there. And try to get him. Kenny gets oh. around the corner and is able to gain some more yards, but 
Good wow, job on that. I was really hoping that uh, he was going to be yeah. tackled by Carl Taylor Jr. there, and yes. he just was not able to get him down. CJ got in there. He had a nice timing on it, and he almost had him. Un unfortunately, he couldn't get a hold of his jersey as you know the Merrimack Valley guy did to uh, Keyshawn Foster. Oh, Keyshawn. Yeah, Keyshawn Foster when he had his jersey. Well, but now it'll be a, a third and seven from the 38-yard line right in front of us, the pride. Third and long here, man in motion, and Hussey got a little pitch out, and he's got to able to oh. hit his own man and is able to get the first down. And what can you say? Colby Schaefer has come to play tonight, Michael. Yeah, Colby Schaefer, great run led by Bry Bryce Winter on the um, – lead block what a you know that that play was led by number nine uh bryce there and uh the little things that don't go on the score sheets make the game and that was that was the reason why uh schaefer schaefer had so much room well it brings up a first and 10 here from the 28 yard line for the pride hussey in the shotgun gets the snap play action it looks like it. Oh, he's going to decide to lay off the screen as. Uh, again, get I, some kind of action here. I, I I thought he had a. I thought he had Sheffer there. Uh, I thought that was a clean play. I guess they're going to call intentional though. They might pick this one up. I mean, at the same time, we weren't able to see what Divine McCall and Braden Hussey had to say. So I'm not really sure if this is a. Uh, if know, it, yeah, after the fact, you mean? Yeah. Personal. Yeah, it is intentional grounding. So you good call on that, Michael. I thought that they're. The, there was a running back. In. Yeah, I, I wouldn't have thrown that flag. I definitely don't agree with that. Because it just, you know, you see Bra Tom Brady used to do it all the time. Oh, yeah. Kind of throw at the foot. It's just a safe play, and that's probably where he picked that up from. Absolutely. I have to assume. But Sheffer was right there, and I can't imagine that. Uh, it, maybe he's just calling it uncatchable, but maybe get it closer to him next time, perhaps. I mean, what can you do when Divine is right there in your face and you just got to get rid of the ball? But It was a screen pass, though. They wanted him in the face. They kind of let them in. It, it was a great play, though, but they didn't expect him to get in that quick. But this is West's opportunity again. I think they need to really go for a strip here, some kind of turnover. We haven't really seen much of that from West so far this year. Hussey going to throw, quickly throw it out. Okay, Some blockers here oh, trying to get to the outside. Able to stay in bounds and is wow. out of bounds there, but able to gain some huge yards on that play. And it will still be a third and long, but able to gain at least 12 yards on that play. And now we'll have a third and 11 here. That just came down to angle of pursuit and... You know, they just took some bad angles and also some good blocking. And 72 got all the way across the field. Ryan Monahan went from left tackle and made a lead block on the right side of the field. He's a beast. Able to quickly run those 40-yard dashes to make those plays happen. For sure. And here we go. Third and long. Hussey got to release it. it. And he's able to make the catch. Oh. Still on his feet. Still driving. Still running. And he's finally brought down. But it will be a first down pride. And a big play right there to Reese Claremont. My coach voice came out of me right there. <laughs> I saw him. Uh, 23 had a jump on it. And he just missed it. He really did try to get it. And in turn led to a little bit of yards after catch. But good job. Get a credit to QB on that one. That was a nice pass. I mean, uh, I didn't think it was going to be to him either. I thought it was to another player, but it was a nice pass in stride. And five minutes to go in this first half. Watch Pride looking Sheffer. to add some more points to their lead. Now into the red zone they go. Okay. And going to be get the ball. wrapped. Get the ball. Can they get the ball? And he's got to stay on his Take feet. Oh, Reese Claremont, look at this, going to the other oh, side of the field. And my. he is going to go all the way. Touchdown, Pride. I have never seen a bigger crack block that Kobe Shefford just drilled. Poor 77. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Wait till you see the replay on that one. Reese Claremont <laughs> just stayed on his feet for the – a lot that of, touchdown, and my goodness, they're going to... A lot of people would say, hey, man, wasn't he called in... I don't know, a lot of people would argue that play could be called dead there, but 
Regardless, it wasn't. So West has decided to call a timeout here on the extra point. Sheffer absolutely pancaked. It was almost like too easy. He didn't see it coming. This has uh, been a rough first half here for has, the Blue Knights as that was just the icing on the cake. You, you got the guy stopped and you yeah. just... You thought that it was going to be Keyshawn able to hold him down, and instead Reese says, no, thanks. I will go the other way. It's kind of like going through the drive through but instead you decide to walk in. Right, like you get the passenger to go in and get, wait in line type of thing. He just figured it was quicker to go through the, the walk-in instead of the drive through and, well, either way, a touchdown was scored, and it makes it 29 nothing. and now we'll see what they can do with these extra points. Well, judging by his history, I'm going to say that this will be deep in straight. Let's see what type of, uh, if he is able to hit a Jeep. I don't think we, he will win one tonight if he hits it. Or a band member if they would slow down a little bit. But it doesn't look like they're, they're trying to get out of the way for sure. <laughs> and a flag is thrown for encroachment on the Blue Knights. Let's see if they decline it. If they go for two on this, it's a weird spot to go. You do, you are able to move up. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it just kind of tightens it up, but closer to the Jeep. No, they decide they will decline, and they, got, they, you know, sometimes you just got to stick to. Yes, yes, I agree. Because you want that space, you want that room. And now let's see. Snap is low. Kick is high. It's. Able to have a high ability to get through the uprights, and that makes it a 30 to nothing lead for Merrimack Valley. Ouch, Grouch. 30 zip. Not for, ideal. Yeah, you know, we came in very high, and we still yes. are high. I think that there things could be changed here, but um, the pride of Penacook, I guess you can say it, formerly were the Indians back in the day when I was younger before they changed their name to the Pride. Yes, uh, interesting. The Central Central Little Green was the Central Pride. We had a Indian as well, a Native American, and now they go straight for the CHS logo. That's things tough look for the, you know. Things change, you know. Yeah, things change for sure. Uh, you can look at the Commanders or the Guardians in professional sports as well to be the same way. Yes. But here we go, Garcia gonna kick off again. And it's a high boomer. Caught this time about the 15. Look at the speed that go, he has. Go, 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 go. Trying to make something move and brought down, but that will bring some excitement to the west sidelines. A yeah. big return by Elias Abreu. Yeah, it's only a sophomore running back. You know, he's the first time he's been deep on the kick. I got a feeling he'll be back there again. Special teams obviously making a special play right there for West as they obviously want to be able to have a good drive here, get on the board, and then they'll get the ball to start off the second half. But, you know, Merrimack Valley is only averaging six points a game on offense this year. So this is something new for them as well. But they can build on that. Well, but, yeah, they, they've only topped that at 14 points all season. Quick handoff here, able to get some yards, and now I'm liking what I'm seeing out of West. Right, and that's uh, Keyshawn again, one of their horses, you know. Basically, uh, Carl Taylor Jr. looks like he's going to be taking over the QB role here, goes over to Coach ProVenture and gets the next play. I'm happy about that. You know, we saw it. I remember when he was a freshman, he was the starting quarterback, so he would just give the ball to his brother a lot, and they would run. Uh, he's a senior this year, so for him to see uh, quarterback duty is nothing new to him. Obviously, it's tough when you, you're one of your most athletic players you t to give him the ball as a QB. But watch, you, watch what he can do. He, he's going to do some nifty things. Well, in the shotgun again, man in motion, gets the ball low, got to hold on to it, finds a hole through the middle, and yeah. is able to get the first down and more. And West is able to get things rolling here late in the second half. I'm gonna. I mean, I'm gonna say something that a lot of people know about West. This kid is their most athletic player, and to see him, 
even if they direct snap and do that play every time, they, they're going to get nothing but positivity out of it. Imagine this. Imagine if West comes back like Frank Reich style, you know, like when the Bills did it to the, the Houston Oilers. <laughs> yeah, it's like not even. We'll see what <laughs> happens. As it's again, about the same score around there. Very similar for sure. Decides to hold on to it again. Yep. Up the middle, there trying to get to the outside. Attaboy. Able to get, stays in bounds. And Tough able running. Able to get that first down and down at about the 20 yard line, I would say. This is the most excitement they've had on offense. And I got to tell you, I got to give a shout out. Keith John, Keyshawn Foster with a nice lead block right there, number four. Really showing some guts. Keyshawn doing a good job of being the man in motion, trying to decide if it's going to be man or zone. So there's those chunk plays we wanted. Uh, he's got about 35 and two plays right there. 2.50 to remaining in this first half. These running plays do keep the clock going, so it is kind of difficult. They do have two timeouts left, though. So they're just going to go with, they're going to keep it simple, stupid. You know what I mean? Like nothing. They're going to do a lot of options with uh, Carl here. Keyshawn in motion. Carl's going to hold on to it, try to ride one of his linemen. Yeah, good and block by 56 right there. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to get space, but that was... Um, he was trying all that he could to make things happen was uh, Mr. Divine McCall, but unfortunately, yes. his uh, the guy that he's blocking was holding him up pretty good. Yeah, Divine McCall, pair eight in paradise. These are senior leaders on the line. And, you know, I really would like to see uh, Elio Chavez, you know, Get another pass thrown to him. He he had that one catch, good for about 11 yards, and it seemed uh, pretty seamless and easy, as he's a big big person. <laughs> Jacob Eli Henry down there, the sophomore offensive lineman as well, playing the guard position here. Would be the right guard position. So he can throw too. Oh, we got a delay of game oh, call the right third. there. I thought it took a little a little too long oh, to get that play. Man, that's, a, that, that's not good. It's a, that's a shoot yourself in the foot play right there. A minute 32 remaining, and you're going to go five yards back after what's been a very good three minutes of offense here for the Blue Knights, and we want to see them get into this end zone. You want to keep momentum going, but, you know, good players can overcome this, but that is – at least three that I can think of that I want to say four, but three I know of off the top of my head that have really backed them up at inopportune times. Well, he, Carl running in with the play. And we'll see. The clock has started again. And we have just 65 seconds to go in this half. They got to pay attention to the clock. So should we expect a bunch of pass plays now is my question what for, yeah he can Keyshawn throw gonna oh, take nice. the ball to the outside Get I that. did see a hold call we'll see if the referee uh, saw it no I don't think they, they don't it. they didn't see it wow you're All talking right. about number five there. I was looking at <laughs> Logan Paradise with that uh, holding call potential and, holding call Kyle. yeah Wes has, <laughs> has used that timeout there it is 30 nothing though you know it is a third down and <laughs> one play here from the 11 yard line so this is going to be a tough spot right here. 46 seconds to go, Michael. Yeah, and I think we were watching the same play there. Uh, it did look like Paradise got away with a little bit of kind of extended him around the corner. But, hey, it's third and one. It is 30 nothing. So you're going to – if it was 3 nothing, maybe they get that. But third and one, 46 seconds. Um, what, two timeouts? This is, uh, this is they just use their second, okay. so they only have one remaining after this. So this is uh, this is huge. <laughs> Not even for the game, just for us. We want to call that touchdown, don't we? We have not had a chance to this year. The only times they have scored have been on the road. So I did call one, but it was brought back from a penalty. That's that's true. But here we go. QB keeper. Third probably. and one. 46 seconds to go. Oh, he give it to him. He's got to give it out. Try to get to the outside. He's got to be stopped. I might have caught it. I. He's got to get up field, though. Yeah. It doesn't look like we're fourth down is on the scoreboard. The guys are rushing to get this play going here. Yeah. And this is. Don't want. Don't make any mistakes right now. 
I'd like to see a drop kick. Most no, they're gonna throw it up in the air. Get it, get it. Oh, it's gonna be knocked away, and the Blue Knights will lose <laughs> the ball on downs again. Yeah, I'm rooting again. But, yeah, I was wondering when they were going to go to him. Like I said, we saw him have some good plays. That would be um, Terrence Beauville as just did a quick throw up to him. And I uh, wonder if he was, had the liberty to call that play himself. I will not sure, but with 14 seconds to go, we'll see if Merrimack Valley will just need the ball or if they will actually go for more points here. I'm hoping that they will just kneel the ball and go into halftime here. But uh, you don't want to put too much salt <laughs> in the taste buds. They are. They're going to take the high road right now. And that will do it for the first half. A big opening half for the Pride here. 30 to nothing they lead. Andrew Proventure will have a lot to talk about with his team in this halftime here. But Braden Hussey is looking dominant on offense. And we can only hope that Gio will look good in due time with his injury here for the Blue Knights. Michael, any last words you want to mention for the first half? Yeah, uh, Kobe Sheffer is a beast. <laughs> well, that will do it. We'll be back for the second half. We'll keep the camera on for those who want to see the band perform. This is Kyle Heavey and Michael Gonzalez for Manchester Public Television. We'll be back for the second half after this. As the final seconds tick down out of this halftime, we are back and ready for the second half here. Kyle Heavey, Michael Gonzalez for Manchester Public Television covering this matchup between the Manchester West Blue Knights and the Merrimack Valley Pride. Manchester West will be going right to left across your screen. We'll be accepting the kickoff after declining the opening kickoff. And Michael, I mean, we, we, you got some news from coach as at the halftime that we uh, will be missing a, a big player for West. Yeah, they, they're going to probably stick with Carl Taylor Jr. at quarterback because Gio Doria is out due to his shoulder. Um, dinged up, just, you know, nothing serious as they miss another kick. Another off. bobble here. Still got it. And he's finally wrapped up and tackled here. It seems to be uh, the, way of the way of the game here in some ways. They're just not able to get those kickoffs very cleanly. Yeah, I, I got from a, a, a very good source that, you know, C.J. Taylor Jr. is not like, it's not his favorite position quarterback, he, but he will do it if he has to. And it certainly seems like he has to right now. So he'll come out there and give his best effort for sure. Well, this is the fifth time these two teams have faced each other. Manchester West was able to win the first meeting back in 2012. But now it looks like Merrimack Valley is really taking control of uh, this little rivalry here. But time will tell. They obviously have given up some points throughout this season. They've had a tough go of things. And now we'll see what the second half brings as now Carl Taylor in motion. Fakes a man out, tries to cut back to the inside, and is finally brought down. But, you know, if he can get space then he'll get that every time. I mean, that nothing that impressive, but it is five yards. And, you know, if you get five yards every play, you're, you're undefeated. <laughs> Unfortunately, you know, it is down. Uh, five is, yards, I will take five yards every day of the week for sure. Now, are we running a running clock here? As we are now? not. It's uh, 35. Okay, 35. So yeah. we are good for the time being. It's just it uh, wasn't a first down, and they didn't get out of bounds, So they and it wasn't an incomplete pass, obviously, being a run. But... Uh, the clock is going to continue to be stopped at v various points. but West has a number of players that play multiple positions, as you see Keyshawn Foster near side at the wing here, going in motion. Yeah, get across the screen. and be, Oh, my goodness, how Carl Taylor was able to get through that is that's, incredible. That's the quarterback. That Braden. was a – Braden Hussey was yeah. able to read the snap and uh, was able to cut across and – he Oof. really did get in there quick. Um, you see a number of players going both ways as, you know, with 22 players, you're going to get that. But, you know, usually a quarterback doesn't go Iron Man. But in this instance, we've seen it for Sohegan. We've seen it a couple times, you know, some big play quarterbacks going both ways. Well, a third and one here now after that four-yard gain. And Carl Taylor Jr. in the shotgun again like to see him throw a ball, you know? It's been a little bit since we've seen a, a, a pass play, but with third and one, and obviously the passing game has worked, but a delay of game will be called against 
the Blue Knights, and that will bring them back five yards, Michael. Yeah, they did two throwing passes. One was to 87 on a quick hitch that was successful. The latter was on that you know running clock, fourth down and goal, or fourth and one. They did that seam pass. Uh, but other than that, it's been run, run, run all day. Yeah. And now the run clock continues to run, which is something that we're going to have to pay attention to if Wes has any hopes to get back into this contest. With uh, i got to give a shout-out to John Malonis, who would double duty on the band play, <laughs> playing uh, – some kind of horn instrument. Pass play. Look at this. Connects. Running through the seam. Can he get past? Nice. He is going to be brought down at about the 35-yard line. And that's the big play that I was hoping for, Michael. That's a big play. And that's a big throw by Carl Jr. Because he a just. third and six just turned into a 35-yard play. It looked like he was turning two on a baseball field. The way he caught it and just threw it right away. It was all one motion. Catch and throw. And, man, he delivered a strike right to Foster, who had some space. And he got about, what, 35, 40 yards on that one. Love to see it here as, again, Wes has not scored at home this season. This is the 883rd game in the history of West High School. So would like to see them score on game 883 for sure. And Taylor is going to hold see it. a lot of that. And it's going to be wrapped up. It's good for a five-yard gain right there. Yeah, I mean, this is what they are. You, it, it, and it really sums up a lot of offenses. You see a lot of offenses that are successful keep it simple. And being forced to do so is leading to success. It, sometimes when you overthink it, you get those procedure penalties. You get some confusion. But right now, they're hiking it to Carl Taylor Jr. And... Either he keeps it or he hands it to number four or he passes it. Well, it's second and five here. Foster's going to get the ball, but, oh, makes, makes a man miss, and it's going to be Ooh. tackled out of bounds. Big hit by the quarterback there. Once again, Braden Hussey showing he's got the merit to go both ways as he delivers a big shoulder on that sideline hit. Wouldn't think a quarterback would be laying the lumber like that. It looks like Jacob LeClaire was also in on that tackle as well. But this is will make a third and about three here on this play. Hopefully they can not get a penalty here and uh, be like they have the last few times. But I expect some kind of – or this is interesting that they get Paradise taking the snap. Look at this. Trying to bowl his way. Not able to. He's going to be stopped. That was an interesting play. You gotta, you gotta real, you gotta figure if you're Merrimack Valley when you get number five in there all of a sudden taking the snap, he's probably not going to do too much with it. They are going to go for it on this play. Coming off the field is Ryan Perkins. Get Coming good. back onto the field is Carl Taylor Jr. Hate to jinx him, but I'd like to give credit to their center who had his woes all season, really delivering some good balls on the shotgun uh, snaps. So they will go shotgun again with Taylor taking the taking the duty this time. Look for him to run right off tackle behind Paradise. Trying to make a move, and he's going to be wrapped up and will be him. brought down, and the Man. pride will take over. Big play by Michael Henney. And Michael Henney with a nice touchdown, doing it both ways, and that's what you're seeing on this team. A lot of studs. Or Heine, excuse me. We said his name wrong. We both did. We just <laughs> didn't want to say Heine. Yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> it's enough. A, even cooler name now. Now we can say it. But, yeah, you know, seems like they were all over that. They didn't really buy it. They kind of sold out and guessed right on that one. Well, we saw Braden Hussey throw a 66-yard play to start off this game. We'll see what they do on offense to start things off. It would be a 70-yarder if he is able to connect right now. But time will tell. Obviously, with a 30-point lead, you don't have to uh, rush things too much if you don't want to. Right, and they get Kobe Sheffer behind him. He's probably going to get the blunt of the carries. And you are right as he was able to get that ball and is finally brought down at the 37-yard line. Strong runner, quick quick hips. You see how he shifts his hips and kind of – but all the while moving forward. That's the key. You want to be moving forward and gaining yards the whole time. You don't want to be too shifty. You want to be going north to south, south to north. Well, for West, 
they can see what they need to get done and it's gonna be, uh, my assumption is a lot of running here, so clog the holes as, uh, right. It's what Merrimack did. Here we go, second and three. And Hussey's gonna hold on to it. He's gonna get tackled. Yep. Real close. It's gonna be, it's gonna be enough for the first down. The referee yep. is saying yes. So and Carlita Lee says, yeah, she, she has a good view from that vantage point. Interesting, you know, they did have that big home run ball the first play of the game. Haven't really gone back to the pass other than a handful of times. I can count on maybe three that I can think of. But, but so if you're West, and same thing with Merrimack. Like, they, they assume they're not passing because they haven't been, even though they've had success with it. But load it up like Merrimack Valley did because that's how they've been successful. They need to have that blitz up the middle by uh, six here. Well, a quick little fullback handoff there, and he's going to be brought down. Getting a little trippy out there now. I mean, it's expected at some point. It's a. Uh, I've been on both sides of things. It's a. Uh, it's competition. It's. Mm -hmm. It's you know. Yeah, it's it, you'll still line up and shake the hand after the game, but during the game, it's. It's. it's, it's, it's there's no really friends no they're they're certainly they're not wearing the same color shirts or helmets for a reason and now we'll see what happens here on second and seven here looks like he's doing some kind of audible i see he's seeing the defense reading it differently quarter he's senior you know he might have that liberty and it's going to be a handoff coming to the near side able to turn the corner still <laughs> on his feet staying in bounds and finally knocked out what a run there by reese claremont Reese Claremont did that last time. He's the he was the recipient recipient of that touchdown where they had him in the backfield and he kind of came the other way and scored that TD on that big block. Um, as you can see, he's someone that doesn't go down right away. He has a lot of yards after contact. And we did find out that he was the receiving end of that 66-yard touchdown to start off this game. So Reese is having quite a game right here, captain. Definitely uh, one of their big players. Number 21 was in the middle of the field. See if he gets the ball again. No, it's oh, it, Hussey decides to get rid of the ball. And who else? Yeah, swing and a miss on West there. Um, had the had the grounds, but you can't be diving. You gotta square up. And if you're Ryan Perkins, you gotta learn from that. You just gotta go for the numbers. He's Again, these are tough. These are tough guys to tackle, especially, you know, especially when you look at Kobe Sheffer, a junior running back, plays linebacker as well. He's not your average size running back. No, absolutely. That's who. It's easier said than done to square up with him. He's a big guy. Well, a second and four <laughs> from the 35-yard line, and the pride. Oh, whistle his. It looks like we might have an injury substitution here, or s not sure if it's blood or you know what exactly is going on here. But could be a twenty-three yeah. having to come off. Sometimes, if your mouth guard break, I mean, there's all kinds of safety rules in play. But you know, walking by the team and stretching, Sheffer is even bigger in person. There's that play again. Trying to get to the outside, cuts back. Look at how the shiftiness. He might go all the He's way so to the five, to the ten, <laughs> to the touchdown. That was right out of Madden right there. He made a spin move, circle, and then just Barry Sanders his way to the touchdown, and that was a nice run. He's quick, fast, and agile. Look at that, Claremont. He might be up for player of the game right now, the he way that be. he's been going. That, I mean, that just shows his ability to get yards after contact as he does it once again, Kyle. Well, that puts a tap on the uh, the running clock. We'll be starting after West receives the kickoff. It's 36 to zero and looking for number 37, almost blocked. It is up and good. And uh, thank you to the kids able to go get that ball and yeah, that's um, <clears throat> this is not unfamiliar territory for Wes, so to have a running clock right now. So, hey, you know, they do this for a reason. They do it so that, you know, it doesn't get too out of hand, I guess. Well, 3.46 remaining in this third quarter, and Wes will receive the kickoff. As we saw earlier, when they do, 
receive the ball cleanly on the kickoff, it looks like they are able to really have an ability to read the field better and makes, you know, run hard. And we saw earlier in the contest when uh, Elias Abreu was able to catch the ball cleanly. And we'll see if uh, if he's able to get that ball cleanly right. again. He is back out there. Uh, talk about number one, correct? Correct. Yes, he's their best option right now as he did get about 40 yards on that re return. Catching it smooth is the key, though. You're right. But he is a boomer. Garcia steps up and ha sky high. Uh, and that's it's got to be another one. <laughs> Get on. Oh, boy. It's, it's, uh, it's got to be number five, I think. That just goes to show what kind of leg this kid has. Hayden Marshall having a rough go of things yes. with the kickoff. Yes, you want to catch that in stride and then. But I guess it is a rule, like if it goes off you and into the end zone, they just touch it back. Probably a uh, safety procedure, procedure. Well, Wes will get the ball first and 10 from the 20-yard line. And they, they've had consecutive drives that have looked really good. They just have gotten stuck after, uh, I don't know if they're running out of oxygen or just the uh, you know pride able to read things better. I think that I don't. Yeah, they like. It's too bad. Uh, you know, um, Foster didn't get that touchdown because he had the space. He's look for that kind of play again. And Foster will get the ball hit in the outside, rounds the go. corner, still on his feet, and dragged down about the 43, 44 yard line. The referee is going to give him an extra yard and big first down play right there for 25 yards. Yeah, he's going to need a blow as he gets up gingerly. Um, he's half. He's definitely had the lion's share of the carries this game. You haven't seen much of uh, number five Paradise. You haven't seen much of uh, Miles Wider at all. So they're gonna ride out Foster because he's the hot hand, and that's what you do. You ride out your hot hand. And now that Taylor's kind of doing the facilitating, but it is a, You know, I, I wonder if he has the option to take it himself or hand it off probably depending on the lineup man in motion and said taylor's it gonna hold on to it does a nice job of hiding the ball and is able to get up to the 50 here it looks like he's getting like five every time you know he's that is a successful play and it, it, they've had their second they've had their third and ones third and twos all all game it's just that's when Bernard, that's when uh, Merrimack kind of stacks the line and you see them kind of sell out and go into that all blitz. I wonder if you can do some kind of pop pass to like 87 Chavez somewhere over the middle, perhaps. If well, you can get time to get if it off. He, the timing is the issue, I think, for yeah. sure. Is I wasn't even going to consider play action, but, you know, a catch and throw type of thing here. Second and five. There's wider right there, right on cue. Runs up the middle, is going to be wrapped up and brought down. Kind of a scary tackle right there as his knees got bent. But either way, Jed Duquette, again, a name I, I promised we would be saying more than once. Yeah, he's all over the place. He's just, you know, not at one of those positions you talk about much. But Damon Butts, uh, lineman for West, tried to carry the ball carrier through the first down here as he did a good job driving the pile. But, you know, Again, you get to expect Merrimack to come all over this right now. I, you don't really see any safeties. It's kind of like they get four L MLBs just going right in there. There's really no one over the top whatsoever. Maybe one guy. Maybe you should send some down. Send down some plays here, Michael. I I would love to. <laughs> oh man, in motion again. Foster goes fast. Pass. Do it again. Get in there. Able to, oh, he's not going to be able to get maybe, it. Maybe, maybe. And that will do it for the end of the third quarter. I think and that's second effort. Now we're going to have to see the fourth down marker has been listed. And, boy, this is going to be a tough fourth quarter if they're not able to get this first down, Michael. Yeah, and that went quick. That's amazing what a running clock will do. You know, as we're going to be faced with the same thing here. Just You can set your microwave for the same time. It's going to grow just as quick. Well, I got to give West credit. That first drive did last seven minutes, so that was a big one. Then, obviously, we had uh, the Pride get the ball and go down and score on that 
big Reese Claremont touchdown. And now t time will tell if uh, they are able to get something going on the board here. They got the ball, but again, starting this uh, fourth down. If they do get on the board, that would stop them from getting out of five games, zero points. So the first, second game, nothing. They did get that 14 points against John Stark, but Milford shut them out, and now looking at another one here. And you were here for the Watertown game. Yeah, that's another shutout. Um, so this would be five out of six goose eggs if they don't get on the board. And here they come. Big play happening here to start this fourth quarter. Yeah, it looks like about a, about a foot or so. It was close. Uh, CJ got his... Second effort kind of carried his shoulder forward. And look, they got a lineman out there. I do. Look for the same play then, and they're going to try to make it happen. Attaboy. And he's able to get the first down, make some moves, still making some moves, and finally he's going to be wrapped up. But that is good for a first down for West. Yes, it is. And he got in there and actually got enough room to kind of make a juke, get left, and go about eight or nine on that one. Now he's carrying the ball. He's going to be close to 50, 60 yards just, just from the direct snap. See what I mean by simplifying the offense, Kyle? Like it can be, uh, you know, less is more in a lot of situations. It's not the most uh, uh, beautiful way to do things, but if it works, it works. And what, what, what do you need things to get going? You, you got to find something that works here. Well, you look at, you know, I mean, you've done Memorial games. They run that triple option. You look at Central, sometimes they get a little too fancy, so maybe somewhere in the middle, you know, it's a simplified offense. Well, we got two teams in blue, and then the uh, the police in blue have just showed up, and now Carl Taylor, look at stiff-arming, juking, and finally is able to be wrapped up. But, boy, that was a fun play right there. It was. He kind of held the ball high up, uh, lefty, and uh, probably had – them uh, caught off guard there, I think, but good job getting back in coverage. And obviously, he didn't like what he saw. You see a lot of quarterbacks force that. So, good job. I mean, take the loss, but at least keep the ball. Yeah, it's going to come back. That was a seven yard loss. So, it's second and 17 from about the 47 yard line now. Watch here. Here we go. Watch um, two, three here, near side. Terrence Foster in motion is going to get the ball, trying to find a spot, able to find Good a couple block. holes. Oh, they're going to look at this. It's coming back, unfortunately. Tackled down at the 10-yard line, but you said it right, yeah. Michael. Way yeah. back here at the 46-yard line is laundry, and it's oh. going to be a hold against a Merrimack Valley. Yes, yes, unless he's got his size different. <laughs> You saw that, right? He pointed right, he that He pointed way. at Merrimack Valley, but yeah. all the players seem to be coming back, so yeah. not sure. He, you know, see if he does this correctly. Yeah, oh, he, he does it correctly. He, okay. He, he tricked us. <laughs> he got me. He, I was, A liar. I was excited <laughs> for it, too. <laughs> I know. But, man, that's that just sums it all up. You know, you get a big play, and uh, I don't John, know. John Jaskala just, you know, I saw, us. I saw he did. It was Aston Kutcher. I, I saw where the, the infraction came from, and it came near side on the stock blocking. I don't think that was a bad call. I mean, I, I, mean, I don't think that was a, a good call personally, but I'm a homer, so what are you going to say? Well, this makes for a second and very long right now as the – But for the pass here, I assume. Blue Knights are in their own territory now. Go deep. There you go. Throwing it up in go the get air. It. Go get it. That's interference. There and the is. flag is thrown, but unfortunately it's different than the NFL. It's only going to be a 10-yard foul. But it was second and 39, and now it's first down and 10. So that's key. You know, they will reset the downs. But, yeah, they had success on the passes. Tell me one time where it hasn't been at least a positive play. I can't uh. think of that. Only that fourth and one. Yeah, Jaskala calls it. It's a pass interference. Oh, yeah, he was all over him like white on rice. Like shepherd's pie at the red arrow. Shep <laughs> okay, there we go. That's a Not a fan? I love the red arrow. <laughs> but try there, shepherd's what? pie. It's really good. 
trying to figure out, oh, they're figuring out where the ball should be placed now. Yeah, they do a little line dancing. Well, let's uh, now back into <laughs> the pride territory for the Knights. And boy, uh, automatic, no, excuse me, it will be second and no, about. No, it should be first down. They, they need to change that. And it will be timeout called by West, so that will stop the clock. That is weird if it's not first down, then that is a different, there's really no reason not to interfere then. <laughs> Again, I, it's a unique thing for sure. The board is different than the sideline, so we got to always trust the, the chains, I suppose, right? They're, they're a ruthless gang. <laughs> they're a ruthless gang. They will tell you what's right and what's wrong one way or another. Yep. But a big weekend here in Manchester. Four, three different games going on here. As tomorrow you'll have Memo or, excuse me, Manchester Central versus the Spalding Red Raiders, a two o'clock start over at Gill Stadium. Michael, it's gonna be pouring rain tomorrow. This is gonna be very unique to see what's gonna happen here in the uh, Grand Estate with all these football games. That's a winnable game for Central too. Riding a, they just got a win. You know, that rain will equalize it, but Gill has a great draining system. Uh, Buzzy Bazoin has a great, they got a great field guy, so they're gonna play that game. And that's Scott Bazoin that we mentioned, and now Carl Taylor fo following his blockers, ran out of blockers, Ooh. on his feet, <clears throat> and is going to be thrown out of yeah, bounds. There's and the extra. More laundry thrown, and boy, this, Do so. this like, is going to get ugly here if the coaches don't get involved here. I mean, that was just a clear-cut late hit. What are you going to say? Not even a late hit, but a violent one. A vi I mean, you're already up 37 points. What more do you need, sir? Referees will discuss things. Obviously, it will be a 15-yard foul, so that will give West the first down for sure if that is the call. Yeah, it will definitely um, increase their chances of getting pay dirt too. We're getting closer and closer. Which is what we're really going for here. One step back, two steps forward, and that's kind of what West, what they're doing on this drive here. That's right, doing their Abbey Road impression. Wow. You got to remember, Michael, they were down here just a matter of three plays on a third and 30-something, and now it's a first down yeah. way down at the 20-yard line. And what, amazing what personal fouls can do. <laughs> it's true. It's a good chunk of yards. And now Carl Taylor gets the ball, holds on to it. Oh, jukes a guy. Whoa, another one. excuse me. Oh. Can I help you? We're going to need some ankle replacements ah, sometime soon with yeah. the way things are going down there. Hey, but again, left his jock strap on the field right there. <laughs> Juked him. For uh, the pride, though, you got to know you're up 37. You can kind of use some of your younger players for sure here on this uh, this drive. Yeah, that was definitely a, uh, a sick move in space, though. And it looks like West has something going here. Um, all led by senior number six, Carl Jr., you know, kind of just improvising the offense here. Nothing really fancy, just hike it. It's, it reminds me a lot of, like, schoolyard football. Well, as they set up the play. As he's not going to take this snap, they're going to go with Paradise. It looks like junior running back will get the direct snap, number five, and he'll do his thing too. Up the middle he goes. Paradise rushing, going, and brought down, but that will be good for another first down, Michael. Different look, you know, uh, you got Taylor, who's kind of a shifty guy, and, uh, you know, he's taking some big hits. You saw that late hit on the sidelines. Maybe coach wanted to give him a break. But then you get Paradise in there, kind of like a LeGarrette Blunt type, like a, like a real head knocker, you know. And here comes uh, CJ back in there at QB again. And now, I guess you could first call it a quarterback. time we've gotten to see this in some time, Michael. A first and goal for the Blue Knights here. From the eight yard line with under eight minutes to go. Paradise still back there. And uh, a and flag has go. been thrown though. Classic West. And it is a false start on the Blue Knights. About six times now that in key spots it's back them up. Now they gotta deal with, you know, it's still first and goal, but it ain't in the 10. 
It's interesting as they went two plays in a row with Paradise as QB there, or you could call him QB, basically as a running back who's getting the snap. And also in Manchester tomorrow to finish that, Memorial versus Timberlane. The Owls of Timberlane come up. And now another new quarterback. Oh Look at this. Huge boy Look running up that. the middle and is able to get. Oh, it's a no and ball. Way. Ground calls the fumble. They can't give it to him. touchdown Raise for the hands. Blue Knights. Touchdown. Yeah, they raised him up. That was close. Looked like the ball did come out. But Big Man gets to TD right there. And that's a moment you'll always remember. Wow. Oh, wow. Did not expect to see a touchdown from a lineman in this contest, but that's what the Blue Knights rode up, and it was good to get him in the end zone. Yeah, that'll go, be a, go as a QB keeper for big man number 56. That is um, Divine McCall right there. And look at this. He's back there again. He Maybe he'll throw it here. This will be a highlight reel. Boom, barrel, boom, boom, boom. Look at him go. And with shades of the fridge. I know, right? The attempt was no good, and unfortunately we do have him on the ground in some pain and not something that we're hoping to see here in the celebration of the Blue Knights getting a touchdown. Well, that's also the other side of the coin. You know, these running backs are used to running and knowing how to go down and taking a tackle. You got a lineman who's standing straight up while he's barreling people over and being effective. A low tackle would really, you know, be an easy sideline. As he's not, you know, he's not taking reps at practice that way, you know. So generally, I would hope not. not well, obviously, they practice something a little bit because he had good ball handling skills for getting the snap and getting the uh, the end zone. The band and the cheerleaders doing a good job of keeping the crowd. Energized and happy down there. As it looks like we finally got a number for the injured player. and uh, 75 this time, huh? Yeah, we, th we thought it was someone different. My apologies on that, ladies and gentlemen. I don't see a 75 on here. Nope. Uh, oh, here we go. Eli Henry. Here we go. Like I said, th this Ross is like reading a Sudoku puzzle. I guess it's listed by class. It's li certainly is listed Press by me. class, and yeah. that's a big loss. I, I do. I like what I've seen from the sophomore. He works both sides of the field, and uh, yeah, we've seen his number for sure. And uh, this will be West first kickoff or second kickoff. Uh, this they is the first. The, yeah, I mean the they, they start off the game with kicking off a squib kick too. So we'll see what happens here. <laughs> Let's see if it's another squib kick. 719 remaining in this contest. I don't know what kind of, yeah. I had imagine like middle, middle left or something. If he shocks us and just hits a bomber. I'd love to see it. And instead, it, it's going to go out of bounds, which is going to be a penalty. So you're given the pride. Good field position again. You got to remember the first half, they had the ball at the 45, 46, and 49 yard on three consecutive drives, along with that 66 yarder that was the first play, 11 seconds touchdown from Hussey down to Claremont. Yeah, right off the bat, getting in there and not really going to it again. I mean, that was a delivered, that was a beautiful ball too. And we haven't seen it since. We've seen a couple passes, mostly screens though. Coach Shaw has declined to take the field position and wants the, them to kick it off. So we'll see this again for the Blue Knights to try to kick off and back deep is quarterback Braden Hussey too. So that's interesting, huh? Rowan St. Jean, the kicker here. I haven't said his name very often there, Michael. How often do you see a quarterback as the deep man on a kick return? <laughs> again, we're going back to this 22 players. Yeah. And now, see what the type of kick. Uh, easy one. Takes a one hopper, caught, ca coming to the oh middle boy. of the field. Wrong guy to get it. Sees it on his feet, still dragging. He falls on the ground. And the ball is on the ground. Let's see who recovers it. I think they it got it. It looks like it's the pride that has got the ball. Oh. He's, he's definitely adamant and yeah. grabbed that ball and got out of there quickly. That was Kobe Sheffer running back. 
and he was the up guy. He weird he fumbled because he's normally uh, you know used to carrying the ball, but yeah, he took that and he's like, nah, I'm running with this one. You don't get those often, so you take it and run. Cam Chevery, very quick to see the ball was on the ground, and again, that was it's going to be good field position into West Territory for the Pride, just like that from the 45 yard line. Yeah, and we're going to get our first look at um, a different quarterback here. Yeah, we don't even have his name. That's the issue that I know, we have here. He made here. some good plays on special teams. This, is, this would be the el elusive number 10. Quick handoff here. He's going to be stuffed and brought back. So that will be there for a loss. We'll try to get the names there, everyone, that we can. As, uh, again, with the more of the JV squad, it's a little difficult to get everything. But with under six minutes to go, We'll uh, work with what we got for number 10 to see who's uh, who's throwing the ball and who's uh, who else is out there for offense. I'm seeing a number 82 out wide on wide receiver. He's uh, no, not on our list as well. And yeah, this is this, this is balls on the ground and oh, he's going to be recovered. Gets his own phone. That's Jack Paris, uh, Kyle. Number 10, the back of quarterback is in there. So his name's Jack Paris. Well, Jack was uh, trying to do a Carl Taylor type run, but didn't have the agility as much. Was was able to smartly pick up his fumble, and now it will be about a third and 15, third and 16, I would say, for the Pride. Five minutes to go in this game, and would like to see West get the ball one more time and possibly get another in the end zone. They yeah. do have two timeouts. Yeah, and this is good for the confidence of this kid. And you, we saw him make some big spe special teams plays. You know, this is a good chance to show coach, uh, you know, as we – it's just – you see the roster, you see their quarterback doing long snap practice on the sideline. <laughs> a little pitch out, trying to get to the outside. He's going to be brought down. And look at that, some big plays yeah. in this fourth quarter. No, no, Omal with the tackle along with Foster. Foster is, must be in double digits for tackles this game. No, no, very pleased to get his name called on this game because number so, 41 doesn't get all that much playing time, but. So the first punt of the game and quarterback Braden Hussey will be doing the long snapping here. As I saw him warming up on the sidelines, you see Central do that too with Caden Salvi. He's their long snapper, so. Once in a while, quarterbacks get to do something different, you know? That's why they're football players. Bad snap. Kick is up. It gets away. Oh it's a good one. Oh, my goodness. This kick can Into get. the lights. Oh, this is going to be covered and brought down very, very quickly there. <laughs> this is the best kicker in person that I've, I've, I've seen this year. As he can kick punts, he can, he's perfect from extra points. That would be number 64, uh, Travis Garcia. Junior kicker. Heine quick on that tackle, too. Yeah, luckily to, receive, luckily to get that as yet again a muffed kick return, but able to get a nice charity bounce right there and recover it as West will get another shot with a running clock. 3-10 remaining in this contest, changing over of the footballs here, and West is just waiting for the referees to put the ball down. Now they will be able to get this going. They're going to throw it at 23 here. And nope. in motion, yeah. no, it's going to be held off. Keyshawn Foster got running, room. got some room, gets the first down. He's got the four Ooh, 20 nice yards tackle. and a big tackle. That's your guy, number 10 right there. That's Paris, Jack Paris, who we just saw make some great special teams tackles. That's a form tackle. That's perfect. He put his head right on the numbers. You look at the belt. That's the key to that. You don't want to... Coming up a little uh, gingerly is Foster, who's got a little limp on it. This kid's got some gumption. I like his style. Jack Paris. Carl Taylor Jr. back out there. Coming off the field was number 87. Who yeah. Quickly looking as there, is um, Elio Chavez. Yeah. Yep, they're going to do something here. Keyshawn in motion. Instead, Carl Taylor says, Get I'm going to go to the other side. Get going, Gets boy. past the 50, and he's got to be another an, form. <laughs> another form tackle by Jack Paris. <laughs> My favorite player on this team. 
Harris might want to get into wrestling because he's got some strength from his legs to make these tackles for sure. And he's got some uh, he's got some pizzazz to him too, which is good for the to being a fan favorite. Well, Blue Knights, 140 to go in this game. That's the at thing. the 50-yard line. A running clock really happens quick because it's in real time, you know. I mean, about the time it takes to go get a snack, this, this game would be over. Well, here we go. Bat low snap. Just going to be re – oh, I don't know if he – he does have the ball. He did okay. get it, yeah. And that's just guts. And now we got someone injured here from the Pride who just falls – that's a gutsy play by uh, CJ. Just really nothing to gain except the respect. Pocket is seems to be in some pain. I don't know if it's anything too serious, but the 60 seconds remain on the clock, and this might be our last play of the game here, Michael. Yeah, I'd like to see them hit Terrence Boville on a on a go pattern here as they get that one on one near side. There he goes. Pass up in the air, coming down. Oh. It, they, they called no good. That was the play call. They went to it. Um, just unfortunately, you know, threw up kind of a wounded duck right there. And the great, great play by Junior Bevel to make sure that he did not throw an interception as he turned from offender to defender real quick. It is hunting season now, this time of year. So the pink certainly helps. To this should be the last play of the game as the running clock will near 10 seconds. See if they can even get it off. I expect to get to get the this line. Off. Ten seconds to go. Oh, Looks like a timeout. a timeout will be called by Wes, so we will get one play to go in this contest. Yeah. A 37 to six lead for the Pride. Obviously, this is just for Pride for the Knights to get something going into next week, where they will have a tough competitor in the Hanover Bears coming into town. Another home game for the Blue Knights. And it will come at a 7.30 start next Friday night, Michael. Yeah, they've had, they're slated for six home games. Um, good crowd, you know. It, it, next week will be their homecoming game, actually. So, you know, expect more of the same. I'm guessing the late start would be because of homecoming festivities, I'm, I, I assume. And they do have a soccer game at 4 o'clock as well. So I know that there's a it's a busy time here at yes. West. Come on down. We'll, and we'll shake your hand. Eight seconds to go. Man in motion. We'll see what they come to. It's going to be a run play. So they called timeout for that. And he will be whistled down. And the Merrimack Valley Pride have come to Manchester and put up a big win, 37-6, your final over the Manchester Blue Knights. Got to give them credit. Uh, classy. They took the kneel at the end of the first half. You know, West got in the end zone. They could have scored a couple more touchdowns, I'm sure, but they kept it classy and got that second consecutive win. So good job by Merrimack Valley. And, you know, good finish by West. It, we, 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 we can only hope that Gio gets a little better, so we'd hate to see his – shoulder carry over any longer but you know a couple positives for west more positive for merrimack valley but you know the beat goes on you what you say drink some water and move on right exactly and we also want to wish the uh the likes of jacob eli henry who came up and was pretty in injured for the offensive line and defensive line as well but that's going to do it here from william meisel memorial veterans field the West Blue Knights are defeated by a final score of 37-6. My player of the game, I have to give it to Reese Claremont. Big game. The runner was running and catching into the end zone multiple times. And congratulations to the victory for the Pride and to Reese Claremont. Michael, you want to give your player of the game? Yeah, well, first I got to say happy birthday to my buddy Yeshua out there. He's a big listener. He loves us. And player of the game would be Kobe Sheffer for me. He's done it all on both sides of the field. He could have scored 800 touchdowns if he wanted. Well, thank you all very much for watching. We'll see you again soon here on Manchester Public Television. For Michael Gonzalez, I'm Kylie Evie. We'll see you again soon.